Hi, and welcome to another episode of Composites Explained. This video will go over composites generally and answer some of the questions like, what makes composite materials different from other materials? And how long have composites been used? And when does it make sense to use composites? Let's dive right in. First off, what is a composite? In the broadest sense, composite materials refers to all solid materials composed of more than one component wherein those components are separate phases. This covers a wide assortment of materials such as fiber reinforced plastics, concrete, wood laminates, ceramic mixtures, and even some alloys just to name a few. Unfortunately, that's too broad for this video series, so we'll focus in on the subset of composite materials that are fiber reinforced plastics or polymers. So far as a formal definition, composite materials are solid materials composed of a binder or matrix that surrounds and holds in place reinforcements. The matrix materials that are most prevalent in the market space are polymeric. So we'll spend a fair amount of time covering a variety of those in future videos. The wide variety of fibrous reinforcement materials will similarly be covered at some length in their own future videos. So we know what a composite is, but why? What's the point of mixing materials in the first place? In short, the answer is complementary properties. In other words, the physical characteristics of the matrix synergize with the characteristics of the reinforcement to produce a new material whose performance is wildly different and often significantly better than either of the two by themselves. So let's take a minute to go over the contributions of those two components. First, the matrix. One of the principal functions of the matrix is to give shape to the structure. That being the case, the most common matrix materials tend to flow and be formed easily, and then hold their shape after the form is removed. The matrix is also the continuous phase of the composite, meaning that it will surround and cover the reinforcements. By surrounding and adhering to the reinforcements, the matrix serves to protect the reinforcements from the environment and also transfer any imposed loads onto the fibers. The matrix is generally weaker than the reinforcements, so being able to dump the load into the reinforcements is critical to performance. Speaking of the reinforcement, its principal role is to provide strength, stiffness, and other mechanical properties to the composite. Generally, the mechanical properties are highest in the direction of the orientation of the fibers. For an example, think of the strands of a rope. The rope is much stronger if you pull on the ends versus pulling it apart sideways. Consequently, the properties of a composite part or structure can be tailored to the direction of the applied loads, which means that the manufacturer of the composite often needs to control the fiber orientations so that the fiber in the finished part are consistent with the engineering requirements. As it turns out, the concept of combining a weaker filler material with stronger fibrous materials is not new. For example, the ancient Egyptians figured out that mixing straw into their mud bricks made them much stronger and crack resistant than mud only bricks. Nature has some great examples too. Think of the structure of wood. Lignins bind together the cellulose fibers that form the trees all around us. More recently, Modern composites are generally understood to have gotten their start in the 1930s when glass fiber was invented almost by accident. Molten glass used in the production of milk bottles created some curious filaments during the process of applying raised lettering. Once productionized, the glass fiber was initially sold as glass wool and used as insulation. Within a few short years, engineers in the aerospace industry discovered that phenolic resin became much stronger and more durable when reinforced with glass fibers. From these humble beginnings, there has been an unending stream of innovations for fibers, resins, processes, and applications that has supported the rampant growth of the entire composites industry, such as manufacturers of raw fiber, fiber processors, weavers, braiders, knitters, resin synthesizers, tooling and equipment suppliers, part fabricators, and of course, end users. But who are the end users, and what makes them choose to use composites instead of metals or unreinforced plastics? For most aerospace applications, composites are desirable due to weight reduction. For defense applications, composite materials might be selected to improve stealth. For maritime applications, composites are a great choice to avoid corrosion. For automotive applications, composites might be used as part of the crumple zone to absorb crash energy and keep people safer. Given all of these advantages, it might seem like composites are too good to be true. 
Although polymer matrix composite materials enjoy a lot of great advantages, there are disadvantages too. For example, cost of materials, cost of fabrication, design lead time, moisture absorption over time, undetectable damage once in service, and temperature limitations should be considered. Long story short, composites are uniquely suited to a wide variety of applications due to the complementary properties of the fibers and the matrix. Composite materials have existed for thousands of years, but the modern polymer matrix composite industry is relatively young. Composites are not a one-size-fits-all solution. Each composite design should carefully consider the loads and environment that the part will experience. That's it for this time. Tune in next time as we delve deeper into the variety of matrix materials and what makes them different both chemically and physically. Thanks for watching.